course. Oh, here we go. Last episode, we made ourselves a cobblestone generator, a mighty big cobblestone generator. And then all of that cobblestone is being sent around through logistics belts from immersive engineering. I kind of threw the logistics in there, but they are definitely logistical belts. Um, and then we're crushing those things. Like we're crushing the cobble into sand and gravel and all of that fun stuff, producing a bunch of iron in the process. But we can also produce many other things. But today we're gonna be a little bit more simple. Uh, kind of simple, as I want to fight the Wither, and I want to utilize some of that iron. Now, another thing I want to point out, at the end of last episode, we ended up finding the Eye of Nebula. This thing is honestly going to be kind of helpful when we go take on things that are inside of the Nether, because we can basically teleport directly behind the mob, and whenever we activate that ability and we do that, it's going to deal 150% bonus damage on top of whatever our base damage is, which is going to be insanely helpful especially for fighting the wither. Now, if you're wondering where I found that, definitely check out the end of last episode as we did find that you don't actually have to go to strongholds to find stronghold chests. Okay, okay, okay. Let's talk about the wither and how we're gonna take on this awful beast. Well, first things first is we need to, well, gather some of the materials that are required in order to take this guy on. Um, and it talks about this right here. Instead of soul sand, you must use soul stone from the by bygone by bygone nether mod. Um, and I've been told that we can find that in soul sand valleys just by doing a little bit of digging. So if that's the case, off into the nether we go. And I really hope that I'm not like overestimating my potential power here. And I really hope that I am powerful enough to take on this wither. Ha! Huh. Perfect. Right here seems like a pretty good spot to, to land. And it does appear like this is going to be where we're going to be farming everything. Very nice. So I'm going to dash on over here. And I've just got to kind of dig around, apparently, until we find some of this stone, <laughs> I guess. Oh, goodness. <laughs> some of the noises I hear. Is that like a necromancer? What is going on? Yes, it's definitely something in that regard. It's insanely loud. There we go. Okay, so I am still on the hunt. And I still don't see any of this stone just yet. There's a whole bunch of other things, though. Aha, uh -huh. I think I found some right here. So I just dug down, and this is the soul stone that I need to mine. Oh, perfect. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a bunch of it because this is going to be the only way we can summon in the actual wither. So now that I'm back, I am prepping myself for this fight. I think eating some apples is going to be kind of my best bet. Um, having milk seems like a good idea, but I just don't know how like easy that's going to be to, to, to kind of do. We're going to constantly be getting the wither effect. So just making sure our saturation is filled should be good. Now, the gift of the heaven is an, a, a fantastic thing that we can actually get uh, once we actually have ourselves some nether stars. And so this will be definitely a goal, but we do have to find the angel's blessing, which I do not have just yet. Um, this thing apparently is found inside of uh, temples. Um, so if I look up, for example, where it's found, you have a village temple, it looks like desert temples, and also jungle temples with a uh, pretty decent chance of finding them in each of them. 39%, a 50% in a village temple. So we might even find that in a village. I'm, I think that's what a village temple is. I honestly don't know. Uh, but the nether star for the main purpose is going to be for a beacon. And then we'll be able to hopefully make a gift of heaven, which will give us creative flight when we're, when we're in within range of a beacon. And that's just one thing we're going to get. Also, a beacon at our base is going to grant us the ability for us to access our terminal throughout all of the overworld. Uh, and then eventually, when we have a maxed out beacon that is within this chunk, we can also <laughs> have access to our storage cross-dimensionally, which is just insane. So definitely worth taking on the wither. 
Speaking of taking on the Wither, I've got to do this in a very interesting way. Typically, I wait till I get to the end, and then I kind of cheese it like everyone does in the end. But I can't exactly get to the end right now, so I think it'll be best if I just take it on underground. Now, there's a couple of ways we could go about fighting him. We can fight him near the roof, which is typically good because the Wither does like to go up and it'll eventually hit Bedrock, or we could fight him underground and hope that, well, this thing just stays after me and doesn't go towards anything else. Um, so I'm going to try fighting him underground and hope that I don't destroy my portal home and all kinds of fun stuff that could eventually happen. Uh, but I hope I can end him quite well, or quite quickly. So we should be able to take out most of his health with just the gun here. And then we should be able to continue on with our sword by using our special effects. So I'm going to clear out a little area right here. And I'm going to prepare myself. So I'm going to eat my apples. And then I'm going to lay down the wither. And apparently this is how it's supposed to be summoned. I'm going to make sure there's like no blocks really connected to it. Just like that. And three, two, one. All right, we have ourselves a wither. Oh, no. Into abomination of such terrible form that it defies description. The earth is stained. Oh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. That was very quick. Okay. And we should be able to take it out so quick. The world lies wow. relieved without the burdensome presence of that horror. So long, at least. <laughs> oh, that's so cool with the eye. We ended up getting two wither eyes from the one wither. Okay, and we also got withered blood, which I noticed this is a part of Tetra to be able to make Ragnarok's edge, which is interesting here. Um, and there's also something, the soul. Oh, this must be a part of like the soul aspect of the integration with Tetra. There's all kinds of weird stuff, but the, the Wither Eye here is one part of the actual puzzle that we do need in order to be able to eventually go to the end. But perfect, we now have ourselves another star and we can make some cool things with this. Well, one cool thing with it. <laughs> that cool thing is of course a beacon. And well, we can actually now craft ourselves a base beacon and that's mainly because of last episode, we ended up getting that iron farm sent up or, or set up. And so I have tons of iron blocks now and we only need a base tier one at the moment. And I'm thinking right here would be perfect because if I hit F3 and G and I look at the chunk borders, this is inside of this chunk here. And this chunk just happens to be perfectly aligned right here to allow me to set up my beacon inside of this corridor, this little hallway area right here. And by doing this, I'm pretty sure we are going to gain access to our storage from anywhere in the overworld itself. It says bringing home the beacon. <laughs> so there we go. We now have ourselves a beacon and we can give ourselves the beacon effect. I think um, if we give ourselves some iron right here, and we give ourselves speed. I think that'd be pretty good. There's also insulation. So the beacon apparently has the ability to provide insulation for you. So if you're in a very, very hot biome, I guess you could just directly use a beacon for that. Well, that's kind of cool. But there we go. Now we have an extra speed boost around the base, which I'm always happy for. And we now should be able to access this. And I think one of the best ways to try this out is by teleporting a little ways out and seeing if we can still access this over 64 blocks away. Otherwise, this might have to be in a different orientation. Oh my goodness, it looks like I'm still able to access it. We're definitely farther out than uh, than 64 blocks. Definitely. Oh yes, and we can access it from all the way out here. That is going to be so nice for exploring. So now with that out of the way, there is still some things I want to hunt for, but there is something that's kind of been looming in the background here the last couple of episodes where I haven't really talked about what this is actually for. I did some testing and it turns out that this can actually dig the tunnels for me. And it sounds kind of crazy, but uh, now that we have access to our storage going way deeper underground, I can start to actually do a bit more mining underground and I want to start building those out. So the elevator that we have here 
is going to be sort of what plunges me into the depths. And I'm kind of excited about that. So our elevator contact, to get this to work, uh, I just need a contact, right? A redstone contact. Um, we just need to place this on the Y levels that we actually want this to, uh, for example, go down to. Um, so there's a couple of Y levels. For example, iron and copper. Uh, I think copper, right? Copper has a very, very uh, specific Y level. So yes, it is com most commonly found around, around Y level 45. So that would be one of the like first stops maybe is having this go all the way down to Y level 45. Um, and, and have it actually mine down here. Like, how insane is that? That it'll actually do that. So, let's see, right on here. And if I put that contact, it'll automatically drop down to that location. So, I think that's the point that is very powerful. Um, let's see, one more. So, yes, it'd have to go right here. And if I place my contact, it'll automatically update. If I place it in here correctly, night vision would be really nice. There we go. Uh, and you can see that that is updated. And we can say uh, this will be copper. Copper mine. Like that. And negative one is perfectly fine on that. Um, and uh, I can continue down. So I can just keep going. And I will go ahead and go down. I think the next Y level that is pretty decent would be maybe Y level zero. So right before the level where we actually need our respirator would be pretty nice. Hopefully we don't hit any like water or anything. So yeah, Y level zero right here. And if this is the floor that I wanna be on, I need to make sure that this is possibly on that same level here. So I'm gonna mine down right here and put the contact and this will be two and this will say, uh, what would, would we wanna put this as? Um, let's see. Before depths, I don't know, maybe base level zero. <laughs> we can keep going from there. And then I think another fantastic level would be all the way down, very, very far down here, all the way down to, for example, uh, I think right, right above where the bedrock level is. I probably shouldn't be just mining straight down, but yeah, that is a thing I am doing right now. Yes, okay, so we should be getting close to hitting bedrock. I know it's completely dark. But we probably want this to be, well, I think 64 is the lowest level. So right here is bedrock, 59. So we take this up uh, a few blocks and we'll probably put it at like 55, right? So if I'm going to be standing at 55, then I want this to be placed where my feet are at. And there we go. This will be base level. Um, and this actually needs to be right here. So there we go. Perfect. So base level. Nice. And then I can just recall all the way back. That recall spell, by the way, is amazing. Allowing me to just simply recall back to this location. Oh, that's perfect. Um, now, something I did notice, 45 is kind of a little bit off there. Uh, I might need to change that a tad bit. Because, right, this is Y level 46. I technically need this to be like one more lower. And this one is copper mines. But yeah, you can see. It automatically updates. Uh, not Minecraft, mine. Copper mine. And we should be good to go now. So, perfect. I can teleport here. And then I'll use my dash ability. Which I'm, I'm, I'm in love with, by the way. And perfect. So now we can go into our elevator and start to use this thing. So now that I'm in the elevator, I can set this all the way down to the lowest level and then activate. And I'm gonna be on this ride for a while, but this should mine all the way down there. And I'll be sure to turn this on so I'm picking up all of these resources as it continues to mine down. But yes, it will mine the tunnel for me if I put drills on here. I didn't know that. And I was like, huh. I wonder if we could do this. Uh, some people mentioned it in the Discord, like, why don't you maybe add some drills to the bottom of that? This is awesome. It just, it'll mine it out for you. And it's also a kind of a cool looking decoration. And perfect, just as I was hoping, it took me all the way down to this level. And now I will be able to simply just mine my way out. And these are all the resources that it collected, by the way. 
tons of resources filled an entire backpack and it even ended up mining through some diamond which is to be expected down in these lower levels uh but yeah i now have a pathway out and we can start to build out some little areas and then i can go let's go to level two and so it's going to take me up to level two and this is just kind of cool i love being able to see the wall it's kind of why i built this the way it is and then once it gets to this base level which puts me at level zero. Oh, I should be able to mine these blocks. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to be able to mine. Something's a little off there, but yeah, th I mean, this, it did take me there and I should be able to go up to the copper mine area. It's kind of weird. I don't know why I couldn't break blocks there unless it's because of the way I was standing on the contraption or something. I don't know. But here we are at the copper mine level. Also cannot, for some reason, break blocks. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, fig I'll figure it out. There we go. I, yeah, I think it's because I was standing on the contraption, which is kind of weird. But yes, this did mine it out perfectly and uh, is going to be very, very helpful. Oh, for getting down here. I'm so excited. Okay. I don't know why I'm so excited, but I have, I have like plans. Like I want to be able to get through here. Let me go back up to the main level. So now anytime I want to go mining, I should be able to just travel to those different levels. Oh, and prepare for a mining adventure. Oh man, and the, these copper mines are perfect because ah, I, there's already tons of copper right here at this level. So perfect. Now that we have that sort of out of the way, we can actually go exploring a little bit. Um, so this is something that I've kind of been putting off for a while and you guys have let me know down in the comments. Believe me, I do read them and I love hearing from you guys. But you guys said right here, I missed a lot when I explored that temple. And I think right now might be a good time to potentially go back and maybe try to explore a bit more of it. And quite possibly we might get lucky and find that item we need, but we're probably gonna find it more likely in a village. Who knows, I can always get lucky. Now this time I brought torches. And uh, yeah, we didn't really explore the underground because it was way too hot whenever we initially came to this location. Uh, and there was definitely traps that we did encounter. Oh, and there's an ant colony in here. But yes, this was like one of the places right here that I was like, oh, we can maybe drop down and maybe explore this a bit more. Ooh, there is a chest down here. Okay, so there's a parkour. Now, I should be fine. Ow. When I'm actually in lava, I shouldn't take like a whole lot of damage in lava because of our, our protection, by the way. But, but now our heat, on the other hand, that's a bit of a, a big one. Oh man, I'm not doing so hot here. Well, I mean, I'm, I am pretty hot in the game, but not doing so hot anyways. Oh, we have another trip wire right here. Uh, can I jump over the trip wire? B barely actually, I don't know how we manage that. Ah, there's another chest. Now I should be able to tell if these are trapped or not. Okay, so there's a bit of gold, melon. We don't really need any of the other stuff here. But yeah, there's like a whole dungeon with that whole parkour course. And there's a whole area here with what looks to be like some sort of puzzle. Let's flip all of them up. Flip all of them down. Oh, <laughs> that opened the door apparently. Opened something. I heard a piston move. Let's uh, flip the rest of them down oh another piston moved that flipped with whatever that was <laughs> and see with this I don't know I don't know if it's like opened a door over here oh and this is a trap chest so I don't know if there's something back behind there is this gonna shoot me there's oh yeah do you see See, this is why I have trust issues. Like, who who does that? Why? Wh who? Why? Why is that? Why is that a thing? <laughs> that right there. Okay, I have a feeling I'm going to need to brute force this by just breaking into the room. Um. Okay. And yeah, we have a bunch of chests. Oh, enchanted golden apples. A banner pattern. I will take all of that. And this is this is what I'm assuming is is the chest that we would technically find inside of like a jump jungle temple. There we go. Smite another golden enchanted apple. That's kind of insane. 
And two more banners that are exactly the same. Perfect. And a bunch of emerald blocks and a diamond block. Okay, yeah, the loot in here is not too shabby. And the fact that I can just open my inventory here and just store all of these items away as we explore... Ah, oh, is the icing on the cake. I kind of want to see what's actually behind this puzzle wall. Okay, so this right here would have flipped this interesting. And so these were the only two that actually mattered. Nothing else in this wall looks like it mattered all that much. So it was so the two that we actually did activate did matter. And so that pushes that here. Interesting. Oh, and there's a chest back here. Nice. A nice little treat. And I still don't know what this actually does. If it does anything. <laughs> oh, there's, a, there's even more chests. So, yeah, I'm glad I kind of busted that open. Nice. There was a couple of other hidden chests back here. So that was pretty interesting, but I still am on the lookout for that specific item. Now, the chances of me finding it, very, very rare. But there's a couple of villages that are off in the distance over here that are like massive villages. And I wonder if I can maybe loot them and maybe that's what it's saying the village temple is. They're, they're way down here. Yeah, here's one, for example. Oh, and also we have some quest rewards. Hopefully we got something good and we also got a withered orb from the unusual end mod. Oh, and of course we get the, the, the forest ingot, which apparently doesn't exist. So here we are at this location. Now the temple could be the center, I think right here, the center church sort of looking building is what's supposed to be, I think, the temple. So we might have some good luck here. If not, there is another one a little bit further away. But we can definitely jump in here and loot. Now I've got to be careful because the iron golems are going to come after me as soon as I start opening chests. So I'm going to have to bear in mind and be very careful because I do not want to be snuck up on, oh man, and get completely wrecked by these things. Also, there is some nice loot. All right, let's check the main temple here. And there is a chest on the roof. Oh, and there's one back here. Okay, so we ended up having some iron spells and spellbook stuff, but nothing that I actually need here. But there is a roof. So we can always check that if I sort of jump up here. That iron golem is going to be very mad at me, by the way. All right, we should be able to grab this. And nothing. No, no, not. I don't think we're getting it from this one unless some of these other chests potentially have like better loot in them. By the way, look at him. Look at him. He is he is wanting to come after me. No, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like a couple of a couple of hits away and I, I would be dead most likely. All right, so I'm going to check this one. By the way, there are free hoppers in these villages. These are all hoppers, by the way. This is a different village. I'm going to check up top. And this, okay, so this is a place where we can find these things because this is a wheel of the ocean that we just found. And we also found a parchment fragment. So this does count. So we have to find these villager or villages and these have a chance of having these enigmatic legacy things in them that's very very nice to know okay i wonder if there's more chests though inside of this village that could potentially have these items in them because there could be and these villages aren't bad you can even find the iron spells and spellbook ink and stuff in here this for example is the cartographer's room that's fantastic in itself because uh, those inks are pretty rare. So if you can stumble upon these villages, you're going to be pretty well off. Yeah, definitely. I'm finding tattered tomes in here on top of everything else. I just found another one of those parchment fragments. We have quite a few of those now. I think almost enough to make all of the ones that we can actually handcraft. And by the way, those are for our book of skills and allow us to craft new abilities. Now, the only other village that I know of that are, I, I see on my map is this one, of course, and I never looted this one, but this does have a ton of, of chests in it. I just haven't gotten around to looting it, and I don't know if this one has the same sort of temple technically in it. Uh, we might have to go loot another pyramid, but if it does, this would grant us another chance, hopefully. Oh, I just, I've, I've just got to watch out for iron golems. 
Like, oh, that's that's I'm just afraid of just getting like sideswiped by one. I really like how these villages are sort of like intertwined with each other. I mean, it is kind of cool looking. Just like all of these perfectly put together like this. That is a hay bell, like a watchtower. Hmm. Ooh, I did find a page with skill, dense skin, which is interesting. It says found in underground spawner rooms, but it was here in a chest. Uh, so the things that saying where they're at, I, I have a hard time believing anything now at this point. And apparently the dense skin makes your skin tougher against enemies. Why try to become a dragon? Uh, like, yes, that just means we're not going to take as much damage, I assume. By the way, after I gave myself that tough skin, notice my bar says times two. Okay, so yeah, it's just basically like wearing armor without wearing armor. That's that's crazy. By the way, uh, this place spawned here. I'm at another one uh, and I went ahead and just flew over here. Um, so what I was going to do was pop into here, but apparently I can't just like mine into this because the whole entrance is completely shut. And because you get given mining fatigue, I can't like get in here directly. So I'm going to have to blast my way through here. And I think I have TNT. I definitely have dynamite. Um, so maybe we can use dynamite to blow our way through here. Yes. Okay. So, yes, the dynamite is actually pretty powerful in that regard. Awesome. Okay, so that got me right in. Nice. There is a spawner in here, if you remember, but I don't have to worry about all this. Oh, this has different games, I think. Yeah, this is a completely different game. Oh, whoa, hey. It just straight up splashed me. Okay, you know what? I'm bypassing it all. We're just trying to get in here. I ain't, I ain't playing games. We've got loot to obtain. Loot to obtain. And all, the only room I'm really interested in is this one down here. So if I can just get down to the room, we should be good. However, mining fatigue does make this a little bit harder. Thankfully, I can, can use this. Make sure that's on. Yeah, and I should be able to get down here. Oh, and because of my reach being so far. Oh, I can't mine this. Can I do this though? Oh, I can, I, I should be able to open these. I think. Yes, okay. And am I gonna get lucky? I did not get super lucky there. And I did not get super lucky there. And is there one in this one? We did find an old eye, but I think we already have one. I'm pretty sure we do. Oh, nothing, man. Definitely the hardest part about this pack is just getting to the POIs and just hoping that you get lucky. By the way, if you can't tell, I have been doing a lot of flying. A lot. Now, I think at this point, now that I've made myself back at home, I think what I'm going to end up doing is using a mod such as the Chunk Pre-Generator mod uh, to just pre-generate this entire world, or at least a ton of it, uh, just to be able to make the exploration a little bit nicer. Because as of right now, I am waiting a tremendous amount of time to simply wait for a chunk to load. And I think doing this would make it a lot more of an enjoyable experience. Um, and so yeah, if you're interested in that, it is the chunk pre-generator mod. It's very easy to use, and the documentation is all on their wiki explaining how it works. Keep in mind though, if you do use this mod, it it is going to make your actual save file quite a bit larger than it would typically be if you just did normal exploration. So be wise whenever you set your actual radius on how far out you actually want it to gin. I recommend maybe 10,000 blocks by 10,000 blocks to kind of start it off and yeah, let it run overnight because it does take a long time to do this. Now, with all that being said, I think today we did quite a bit. Uh, and I, we even ended up finding another like sort of relic, which is kind of insane. The uh, the water based one, right? Uh, which I think is still in my backpack, the will of the ocean. And apparently if we wear this one instead of the eye of nebula, this one we should be able to swim around incredibly fast in. Like this is just ridiculous as if we wouldn't swim fast enough. Now we can swim even faster and everything just sort of scales on top of each other. And then if we take out, for example, levels of experience and we level up our skill book. Oh boy. I, I think, uh, I think we're going to be more powerful 
than we honestly should be. <laughs> Look at our armor. That's two bars of armor. And we're like a dolphin now in the water, which is hilarious. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with today, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, more building coming soon as I continue working on all of this, but be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video a huge thumbs up. And guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Dylan. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and by becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Thank you for supporting this community, and I appreciate it. Guys, be sure to check out the Discord if you haven't already. And, well, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. Uh, if you enjoy this content, you're probably going to enjoy it over there as well. And I do stream three days a week. So I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.